I'm a night owl. When the sun goes down, they get to work. We're committed to being there late nights. Entrepreneurs who earn their bread and butter after dark. We're talking about restaurants like Hot Italian. Some Hot Italian right there. Good stuff. Wrapping Taxi Day. The construction crew building a new arena downtown. A couple of young guys delivering hot cookies and cold milk. And a family business that gets fresh produce to restaurants in time for the breakfast rush. This is the boys' family business. This is, yes. Feel pretty good about that? Yes, it's, it's pretty awesome. We're working the night shift on Yes, We're Open. Yes, We're Open is made possible by... Your business has big dreams, and you need a partner who can help you reach them. SAFE has customized financial solutions plus local professional experts to help your business grow. Get a bigger business plan and change the way you bank at safecu.org. As your community-owned electric service, SMUD offers incentives that help your business save energy and money. Let's power more savings at smud.org slash business. SMUD, powering forward together. When the sun goes down in Northern California, these entrepreneurs get to work. Hi, I'm Jason Schultz. We're highlighting small business again on Yes, We're Open on the night shift. Let's meet our first young entrepreneurs from Cookies and Milk Delivery. Nick Altman knows you gotta be willing to do the strange, the different, the, well, the giant carton of milk costume if you wanna get noticed especially if this is your business. We got two dozen cookies for you guys tonight. Okay. Thank and then that's much. good for two free next time. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, enjoy. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Warm cookies and cold milk delivered to your door. Nick and his business partner, William Countryman, who's back at the bakery taking phone orders, admit they've got an unusual business. They answer the late night call for cookies and milk. We're open Thursday through Saturday in Midtown, downtown Sacramento, 7 p.m. till 1 a.m. Both of these guys have full-time jobs. The delivery business was originally William's idea. Will came to me like he needed some help with business and like I came in more as the serious business guy and helped him get it off the ground and I love the idea and jumped in. The whole idea for it um, came out of us being up late at night, like wanting something that delivered and not being able to find anything out there. So we wanted something sweet that we could get delivered to us. All right, so here they are, the s'more cookie. In a hot, cramped bakery downtown, the cookies come out of the oven and into a box, and they're on their way. Honestly, it's hard to see the path to big bucks here, considering the cost of ingredients, labor, and gas. But these guys say not only are they surviving, they're thriving. And that's it. All right, and just to give you a heads up, we are looking at a little bit longer of a wait, like an hour and 15. Does that still work for you? We're trying to get better every single day, um, get better at baking, get better at methods, uh, process, deliver better customer service. So we're always trying to learn and grow. Do you want another coupon? Yes. They've recently expanded their delivery so area and now have, have five time. employees. Can you explain what just happened right now? Yeah, uh, there's a company called Cookies and Milk. <laughs> William and Nick fit the profile of millennial entrepreneurs, college grads with full-time jobs, but hungry for more. In fact, 60% of millennials identify themselves as entrepreneurs. We both have other jobs. We work 30 to 40 hours a week. Besides this, that's something else. So this isn't just our only thing. So I definitely think that there's other people like that out there, just like us in our age group who don't want just the nine to five and kind of want something a little bit extra to, you know, be out there. I feel like a lot of people in our age group, we don't feel as much stability in the jobs that we're in. So a lot of people are looking for that extra something on the side or uh, a lot bigger entrepreneurial spirit around people our age. People are getting into owning their own business and wanting to be their own boss. 
feel like companies aren't as loyal to employees. Like you used to be able to put in your 40 years, get a gold watch, like that doesn't exist anymore. There's no like sense of loyalty to the employee or trying to take care of your people. I think if we would have started this later on in life when we had more stuff going on, um, we wouldn't be able to go as far as we have. These guys admit they're both night owls, so this business suits them well. There's never a dull night when you're working a late night delivery job, especially when some of your orders get there at like one in the morning. You know what I mean? That's like your best customers in the world. A lot of the time people are just in awe when we get through yeah. the door. They're just like, I can't believe this. Is, like they were tapping a few buttons on their phone half an hour ago and then they're like, what? Cookies are at my door right now. Like. People forget sometimes that they ordered 45 minutes ago. Yeah. They're just real happy to see anybody bringing them food that late at night. You, I mean, if you're not willing to make it on your own, think about how happy you'd be at one in the morning if you got a dozen warm cookies, some cold milk right there to your door. What's next for cookies and milk? Nick and William want to open up a retail storefront. And from there, the sky is the limit. Cookies and milk franchises across the U.S. How many? 32. <laughs> At least, yeah. 32. 10 years, yeah, 10 years, it should be more like 40 something. But 32, I'd be happy. I, I could go to sleep at like an early hour and not worry about it. For the time being anyway, early sleep isn't the thing for these young entrepreneurs. about a nighttime skyline. And Sacramento's is changing. New construction means new jobs and a boost for local business. For such a massive project, the nighttime construction at the new Golden One Center is actually pretty quiet. Trucks come in loaded with giant concrete pieces. Cranes lift them into place to form what will become the Arena Bowl. This is the top of the upper bowl, yep. And, like, and this is the last piece on the very end, so uh, they're going to bring this panel up, drop it into place, put it in the right position. These are the cheap uh, seats. Unhook and, uh, yeah, yeah. We're way up. Yeah, your nose, nose bleeds. Your nose is bleeding up here. <laughs> Clark Guerreri is the project manager for Clark Pacific. That's the West Sacramento-based precast concrete manufacturer tasked with casting 700 huge sections of the concrete upper and lower bowls. Well, the process is, uh, you know, we've, we've been working on this project for a uh, uh, couple months now and casting these panels out of uh, woodland at our plant. And starting uh, just a couple weeks ago, we started hanging these panels. So we're, we're, we're trucking them in about two panels a load and we're hooking them up to this crane here and they're flying them piece by piece onto the building. Piece by piece, piece like by a Lego piece. set. Yeah. Coming down. Coming down. Coming down. And so there's no uh, concrete being poured out here. Nope, the concrete's been poured all back at the plant. So that's that's how we're... Uh, and it's trucked in here. Exactly. And it's yep. faster to do it that way. It's faster for the project schedule for us to, to be able to do it that way because all the time spent casting and forming has been done uh, off the job site. The arena will be open in time for the 2016 NBA basketball season. Laura Braden works for the Sacramento Kings. My favorite thing, other than just the fantastic views you get from this vantage point, uh, is just the speed, the click, the pace that it's moving at. We, I'm down here a lot, usually once or twice a week, and every time I'm down here, it's completely different. Things are really just moving so fast. It's gone from an old mall to a hole to now a structure rising. It's really, it's, it's great. So 70% of the contract work has gone to local businesses in the region. So everything from Placerville to Davis to Woodland to West Sacramento to right here in Sacramento. Um, so it really is bigger than basketball and uh, the jobs and the impact on and off the site um, are truly a regional effort. A good impact on your business? Yeah, definitely. We've been able to keep a lot of guys busy working on this project. Uh, you know, there's a group of maybe half a dozen uh, engineers that we've been working on this. So 40 to 50 engineers working on it ahead of time, we've and got, then even more people here. Yeah, 40 to 50 guys are casting these out in the plant. 
and then, uh, then we got about a dozen guys out here putting them on the building and, and making sure everything's in the right spot and getting our final connections made. That's a pretty good payroll, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, good for your business? They're very good for our business, yeah, and, and, and it, being local is something we're really uh, love to do, proud to be a part of this job and, and having a great time. Clark Pacific has been in business in this area for more than 50 years. Well, this is a nice way to celebrate 50 yeah. years, I would say, yeah. wouldn't you? For sure. There's definitely memories made when they get to come back and watch a Kings game and, and tell their kids they're a part of putting this building together. What's your favorite part about this? I, I, I love seeing from uh, start to finish here, so seeing this all come together the way it has is, is really a, a point of pride, and, and I, I'll be telling stories to my children too about it. What would late night be without a slice of hot pizza? Well, one place in Midtown Sacramento has been serving it up since 2009, Hot Italian. <laughs> Andrea, how are we doing? Hi, good, how are you? Thanks for having good us at Hot you. Italian tonight. Andrea Lapore is one of the founders of Hot Italian. Back in 2009, she and Fabrizio Cercatore teamed up to bring authentic Italian pie to Sacramento. Well, hot Italian pizza is, uh, is authentic Italian style pizza. And uh, we do the best to not compromise the, the quality. A lot of people ask to put, uh, you know, we don't do chicken or pineapple pizza. I mean, we keep uh, our recipe authentic. And it's not just about the pizza. And you've got like this cool vibe going on. I like it was a bicycle hanging from the ceiling. Yes, that is a beautiful Bianchi. So everything that we do here, uh, we like to describe it as modern Italy meets urban California. And what does that mean? So uh, if you have ever been to Italy, uh, yeah. there's a lot of people that cycle there and, and drive Fiat's and, and eat great food. So we wanted to take a little bit of modern Italy, um, which is more modern design. So this is all furniture that's Italian design. When we opened back in 2009, you know, a lot of the Italian restaurants were very kind of old school, like you know, New York style. So mm -hmm. red and white tablecloths and tomato cans on the tables. And, and I don't see any of that here. No. Another aspect of their business is their environmentally sustainable approach. Hot Italian was one of the first area restaurants to be LEED Silver certified. It's a distinction given to buildings with an environmentally sustainable approach. Our lights, which are, these are all LEDs. Um, these circular shiny objects here. Is that right are, there? Those are solar tubes. That's a solar tube. So that's pulling in light from? Pulling in light during the day so we don't have to have actual light fixture on during the day. And then at night there's a CFL bulb okay. in there. The tables here are made from paper stone material, which is a 100% uh, recycled composite. Yeah, the local fabricator Mike Whiston at 12M Design manufactured all of these for us. And they're on wheels, so they're easy wheels. clean up. Yep. And the chairs, these yes. are funky these, chairs. These are too. Italian. These are Italian yes. chairs. Moroso, mm -hmm. yes. I know food waste is a huge issue right. with restaurants, right. right? That's one thing that you always hear about, what's with all the extra food. Right. What do you guys do about that? Well, we installed what is called an earth tub, and it is a commercial composter. Commercial compost. Right. You're composting the food waste right here on site? Yes. Can we see it? Sure. All right, let's Come check on. it out. All right. We're out back. Yes. Behind the place. Behind the scenes. It's nice and quiet back here and cool tonight. And look at this thing. It is not a hot tub. Darn it. No, it looks like one. Look at this. Holy cow, it's huge. It's a beast, yep. Green Mountain Technology. So what are we looking at here? So this is our famous earth tub. We put all of our organic scraps in here. So any scraps from the kitchen that is produce, um, so you know, ends of lettuce or the you know, rind from the zucchini and the pumpkins and, and lemons from the bar and, and uh, coffee grinds and eggshells, so anything organic. It all goes in here? It goes in here. What happens inside? 
So this little guy, or big guy, turns, you push this like you're, you know, rowing, and then the auger here rotates as well. Stirring it inside. Why is it mixing it? What's the... Well, it's basically breaking it down and, and it's... Um... Turning it into compost. Correct. How long does it take? Um, usually about six weeks. Six weeks after it's a slice of pizza that didn't get eaten, it exactly. turns into compost. Right, for farms, um, community gardens. I mean, it's pretty amazing. One thing you quickly notice at Hot Italian, their love of bicycles, inside and out. These are called cycle pods. So cycle pods. These were created by design students over in Europe, and we love them. I mean, the fact that you can park eight bikes within a six-foot radius is, is pretty amazing. You can fit eight bikes on there? Yes. So it's not like a bike rack that people are trying to stumble around it, it's in the way. Well, people, people can park people right next to it. People get a little confused. That's why we have <laughs> instruction. Right, right. But they're up and they're out of the way. You can Correct. park right next to it. Yes, and you can also lock you know, the frame and the wheel both at the same time. So it's, it's much more secure than kind of those little loopy bike racks. It is, bike rack. okay. Yes. Environmental sustainability is a selling point for many business owners. As their customers look to their own efforts to reduce their impact, they're also looking at where they spend their money. A hot slice with a side of sustainability. Oh, and about that pizza. All right, chef. That's some hot Italian right there. Good stuff. Do you love this? I love it. Even now, after this many years? <laughs> after this many years, I eat pizza every day. Do you still? Mm -hmm. Pizza is like universal things, like all over the world, you know? And the night rolls on. Let's face it, the night shift isn't for everyone. Working after hours can take its toll, but some folks are uniquely suited for it. I'm a night owl. And there's a lot of opportunity at nighttime. Uh, there's way more cabs during the daytime. And this guy is one of them. Dave Rivera is Sacramento's best known taxi driver. He goes by Taxi Dave. When it's slow, I work seven nights a week. When it's not, when it's real busy, I, I take a, a night off. Get down on, it. on any given night, and especially on weekend nights, you'll find him cruising the streets of Sacramento. Dave not only tolerates the late night downtown scene, he becomes part of it. In my cab, I put on performance. They don't just get a clean and safe ride, and I don't charge anything extra for the entertainment. Music is loud, his act is intense, but it works, transforming an otherwise uneventful cab ride home into a rolling party. The origins of local legend Taxi Dave can be traced back to 2008. Dave was newly divorced and broke. Believe me, I was basically homeless and didn't have a job and didn't have transportation, but I took my last $400 and invested in the leasing of this cab, which solved temporary place to stay, a job, and, um, you know. You were living out of the cab. Correct, correct. It didn't take long for Dave to figure out he needed to stand out. And Sacramento Venture is going to be rivaling the party town USA cities in California like San Diego, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. And so I said, oh, there's an opportunity there. So, and I'm a night owl. So I said, okay, I'll work at nights. And so I started picking up customers at night, going to bars and nightclubs and hotels and stuff. And I noticed they all like music. So I started playing music and I started rolling my windows down and playing music out of my windows. And it attracted people. And it also told them, hey, that cab is cool. He's playing music, speaks English, and it's clean. Let's go for a ride in that guy's cab. Okay, we're going to do a busy area. J between uh, 27 and 28. This right? is where it's hot. Yes. Yeah. So they're going to recognize you. 
That's what I'm talking about, only that I'm real. That's what I'm talking about, only that I'm real. That's what I'm talking about. And from there, Dave turned himself into a YouTube star, rapping Taxi Dave. Yeah, uh-huh. You know who I am. I'm Taxi Dave, Taxi Dave. I'll be behind the wheel of my yellow cab, singing it and slapping it, and that's that. I created a video called Black and Yellow Cab, and I did it on purpose to be funny, to go in the bar, sing and sit and watch and laugh and get in their head, don't drink and drive, call a cab and call Taxi Dave. And it worked really well, and eventually I got auto-tuned by the Gregory Brothers, and it's called the Taxi Dave song. Yeah. His performances went viral and even landed him an appearance on the Comedy Central show Tosh.0. And now Dave isn't just competing with other cabs, he's up against ride-sharing services like Uber and Lyft. While they may have taken a bite out of other taxi cab fares, Dave's act kept the meter running. None of the other Uber Lyft drivers, most of them, you can't, they're not allowed to build relationships with their customers. I can and I do. What's next for Dave Rivera? Well, he's working on a book and looking to take Taxi Dave to the next level. In the meantime, music is pumped, and so is he. Taxi Dave with my teeny chain. Oh, yeah, I'm a different cabbie. Our next stop on the night shift is Produce Express. Hey, you must be Robert. Yes, I am. How you doing? Nice to meet you. While most of Northern California is soundly sleeping, the huge Produce Express warehouse is buzzing with activity. Whoa, this is where the action is, huh? This is it. Robert Boyce is in charge of the 35 drivers here. He's the second generation to help run this family business. More on that in a minute. This crew has until 7 a.m. to round up all the deliveries for hundreds of restaurants within 100 miles of Sacramento. There's no time to slow down. Each one of our drivers uh, pulls the orders on his route. As Sacramento's culinary scene grows, the need for fresh deliveries of ingredients does too. And Produce Express has become the go-to for chefs in the know. That includes hot Italian. We have chefs that have been around for 20 years. They want Ever Produce since. Express. Exactly. Because? Because we're Produce Express. Because what we do for them and how easy we, we try to make it for the chefs. Around here, they like to say Produce Express was farm to fork before farm to fork was cool. The company prides itself on its direct connection to area farmers. Recently, they even hosted a chef's farmer's market at their warehouse, inviting local chefs to show off their culinary skills using locally grown goods. Crazy flavor, that was good. We supplied the chefs with the materials from the farm that they're using, and they're pairing up, as you can see here. One of our farms has brought in local beans, and our restaurant here is making dishes with those beans. This is Dwelling Farms and Waterboy Restaurant, and there's tables like this all the way through. I love all your heirlooms. They're beautiful, and they always look great. Kimberly Medici owns a Diamond Springs catering business. The Chef's Farmer's Market is a chance for her to talk with West Sacramento tomato farmer, Ray Young. One of my primary goals today is to meet a lot of the non-certified organic producers and find out about what their practices are so I know who I feel comfortable ordering with. There's not a lot of other companies where you can actually have the opportunity to meet each of the producers and taste the food. And it's fun to see what all the different chefs are doing and putting together with their food. Cool, thank you so much. Are these the zebras? Produce Express is actually interested in, in the flavor of the tomato. They're actually interested in what's gonna be good for the consumer. Whereas when you deal with some of these other um, distributors, they're more interested in how long the shelf life is and whether they can turn over a dollar. Back at the warehouse, it's 5 a.m. and owner Jim Boyce is working the phone. Good morning, good morning. Last minute order changes come in, a little more arugula, a few less sweet potatoes. 
Jim's parents, Jim and Barbara Boyce, started this business in 1984. Jim, Pops Boyce, passed away in 2004. Your dad would be proud? He would be. Yeah, when he started, he started with one truck and he didn't have a warehouse. He came down to the markets and he would pick up what he thought he needed for the day, go to his accounts and go into the restaurant, get their order, come back out on the truck and pull their order. And then if he didn't have what the other stuff that they needed, he would come back down to the market, pick it up and go back. Basically did his route twice. He worked his butt off. 31 years later with 32 trucks, hundreds of customers, and more than 80 employees, Produce Express is delivering the goods. Well, the sun is coming up and the produce deliveries are on their way. And at this point, the rest of the region is waking up to get to work. Oh, by the way, these guys have been at it for hours already. That's going to do it for this edition of Yes, We're Open. I'm Jason Schultz. Thanks for joining us. You can purchase a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this program. Here's the cost. To order, just visit us online or call 888-814-3923. Thank you. Yes, We're Open is made possible by your business has big dreams, and you need a partner who can help you reach them. SAFE has customized financial solutions plus local professional experts to help your business grow. Get a bigger business plan and change the way you bank at safecu.org. As your community-owned electric service, SMUD offers incentives that help your business save energy and money. Let's power more savings at smud.org business. SMUD, powering forward together.